building sonic cathedrals in the sky. Hey guys, welcome to that pedal show. Dan here. Mick here. Uh, hello. Beaming faces of pure wonderment today. This is awesome. Uh, welcome to Pedal Jams. Today on Pedal Jams, we have four pedals. They are, Daniel. We have the Synth One from Keely Electronics. We have the Monochrome Series Pumper and Purra in the double uh, enclosure very, from NRG Effects. Very nice. We have the Planetarium from, I want to say, Neon? Neon Egg. Neon Egg. And the uh, new signature analog tremolo from Hampstead Soundworks. Woof. What? I'll tell you what, it was pretty good last week. Selection of stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look at that thing. I'm well, I'm going to struggle to get through everything else just to play with this thing because that's the most incredible looking pedal I've ever seen. Uh, just in case you can't see it, it's kind of like, it's it's a desk type thing. So it, it it's, it's got two surfaces. You'll see it in the uh, detail anyway. Um, How we've, awesome. We've pitched it up a bit so you can kind of sort of see. Um, all right, let's start with the Keeley Synth one. We saw this at NAMM last year. We did. Not this year, because we didn't go this year. <laughs> no, we didn't. We had a year off. I was watching the NAM coverage feeling <laughs> jolly uh, happy with myself. I was sat on the sofa by the fire and not trawling around the NAM show floor. Maybe we'll go next year, Dan. Yeah, I missed uh, I missed Andy. Yeah, and... I miss seeing people, yeah, of course, yeah, 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 yeah. of course. But just the blooming hubbub of the thing and yeah, having yeah. jet lag for a week and a chest infection. No, thanks. <laughs> Grumpy, that's... Um, all right. Keely Synth One. Um, yeah, so we saw this last year. I fell in love with this thing. It was awesome. It is, Dan. A guitar triggered single note wave generator. Awesome. Um, the attack control gives you anything from four milliseconds to 1500 milliseconds, mm. which means you can do like a boss slow gear type. Oh, with a fade in type. Fade thing. in type. Nice. Thing. Um, the filter controls the cutoff frequency of the synth waves uh, and the chaos switch controls the type, uh, the way in which the pedal detects the note. Ooh. So in the standard mode, it's like a Boss OC2. Oh. And in the Chaos mode, it's not like a Boss OC2 and it's more unstable. Okay. Um, you can use an express uh, expression jack to control the filter. Okay. Uh, blah, blah, blah. And it's got three different um, waves. So, Ganyi, sir. Uh, I'll turn it off to begin. Oh, no. The, the amps we're using today are Marshall 1987X, Plexi, uh, and Ma Dan's Matchless HC30. That'll do. Flat, loud, strong. Uh. <laughs> So one of the things I've always struggled with with the synth pedals is trying to get it to be uh, predictable. Sure. Because it's taking, well, it's just taking us the first bit of your note and turning it into a sine wave, isn't it? Yes. And then or, manipulating. Or indeed any of these waves here. Yes. 
Yeah, yeah. Just try that attack thing for a sec. So this is this is four milliseconds, so this will be almost straight in. Okay. And then here's the 1500 milliseconds in. Just for the halibut, let's add some reverb. This is so awesome. Okay, we've just made a Depeche Mode record. Man, alive. I love it. I love it. It's the, the analog nature of it. It's so, uh, it has so much character. It's beautiful. I don't know how you make it predictable and therefore you, I guess you just have to put hours in. Right, you, Hang you on. play. Just before you finish, okay. um, you can finally, you can blend in. So here's your just straight through guitar, I hope. Okay. feeling every little bit of that. It's days, isn't oh, it? Oh man, that's a, just awesome. Days, if, if you were confused about what was going on there, this is creating the synth. The blend pot here enables you to mix in your um, unaffected guitar sound, which we were then giving some overdrive from these two, sending into here for delay and reverb. Which is pretty monstrous sound, isn't it? Really, really affecting. Well, the We've got a backing track, so let's see if we can actually make it sound like music. That's okay, crazy. At the end of the at the end of the show. All right, let's move on. Um, Neil Grimes from NRG. Effects. Neil Grimes. Um, I'm going to put a picture up on the screen now of what this thing looks like inside. Okay. What do we think about Neil's work, Dan? So, Neil is an effects builder that you really should know. The guy has got magic ears and his commitment to just awesome work, you know, the whole point-to-point thing. It's a to point thing of beauty, and you'll see amazing. all the, like, the flown wires are at right angles yeah. to minimise the signal noise and all that. It's just, love it. It reminds it's, me of Harry Joyce. Yeah, yeah, from absolutely. The, from the High Watt days. But anyway, so you may, the first time we ever featured a NRG was the Purra. Mm -hmm. Right. There we go. Um, mm. 
Yeah, with cats on it. First thing I did after I heard it was to whip the back off and then saw the words. I thought, hang on, okay, this is a really serious bit of kit. Uh, bit of kit. Yeah. And then he came out with, there's a whole bunch of series like this. And then he started bringing out the, the smaller. Yeah, they're called monochrome. Um, and again, we've probably got one here somewhere, but it doesn't matter. It's half of this. And what Neil has done, he's put two in one box. So of the various um, monochrome series pedals. There you go. Sploink. Yeah, in one box. So what this puts is the Pura Mini, which is a mini version of that, which is a kind of um, transparent overdrive, a do-it-all overdrive, in with the Pumper 072, which is uh, a 25 dB super clean boost. Right. But um, you've got attenuation for bass and treble. Oh, okay, nice. So you can shape the boost, which is quite nice, and change the order. So you can have overdrive into boost, or boost into overdrive. Even better, these jacks on the outside here mean that you can place effects in between. Okay. So if you wanted to hit, and you can do that in either direction. So if you wanted to go, for example, overdrive, delay, chorus, reverb, boost. boost I see. You could do that. Okay. Which is really, really, really nice touch. Um, even more interesting, not in this one, but in the other one he sent us, which is a fuzz and a distortion. Ooh. They've also got parallel. Ah. So in, um, for anyone who doesn't understand that, it, in this pedal, they're connected in series. One goes into the other. In parallel, they're together, and then the the, um, the input hits, hits both of them, and then they're mixed at the end. We don't have a, a dance for parallel no, thing, we do we? No, we do we? No, we work on that. Yeah, we should make one up. Okay. Anyway, enough yakking. Um, so let's hear the overdrive. I forget what these controls do. Dan, you can tell me what the controls do. Okay, while you have shrunk out. While I, sh while I shwang, here you go. There is a handy diagram. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Oh, even, this di oh, even the paper his stuff is printed on is lovely. Boy, oh boy. The big knob is gain. This the, one? Yep. The knob le uh, top left is yeah. the output yeah. volume, and the knob top right is treble presence. It's treble presence. Okay, let's get everything more or less in the middle. Okay. Uh, here I am. Here you here are. Here I am. Nothing is working just because I don't have it plugged in. <laughs> I find it so much louder when you actually plug it in. Yeah. Okay. Hello, Blue. Shrongage. <laughs> Natural feeling. Mm. Here are some humbuckers. Mm
Nice. If I flick the switch, I think it will get a whole lot louder, so just be okay. careful. Okay, yep. What you heard there was um, when I first switched the pumper side on, it was first in the chain, therefore was overdriving the overdrive a bit more. And then I flicked the switch uh, where the overdrive was first and the boost came second. And of course, you've got overdrive going into boost. And because the amps are set fairly clean, we get mm. a massive volume lift. And it has a massive input range as well. Yeah. That's really impressive. Really high headroom. It's mm. got, a, got the old uh, voltage charge pump of course it does. on it to give it a bit more headroom. Um, I'll sort of have a quick listen to these trim pots a sec. Sure. For the... Rolls off high end. Mm -hmm. Rolls off low end. Can I just try... If I do this, that's off the low end. Yeah. And then leave the high end on and make that go first. Um, so. Trying to tune it like a treble booster. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. I think that's the point. So whether you've got the um, the boost section running into the drive or after the drive, you can just tweak. It's really nice. Roll off some. So if you're running it after a fuzz, for example, you might want to roll off some low end. Mm. If you had something that already had some roll, low end roll off and you wanted to add it back in, very neat solution in one in one thing. I can't wait to try the other one, the fuzz and the yeah. distortion. Yeah, yeah, very cool. Parallel. Very cool. Yeah, awesome, Neil, as always. Um, I think what we were hearing there was loud and clear the character of the guitar is coming through. Yeah. Seems like a super, I don't want to say clean signal path, but I mean, what do I mean? High integrity, you can just hear everything, the mm. big dynamics and all of that. Yeah. Very Lovely. cool. Yeah. I think we should do the tremolo next because there's a lot to get into with the, yep. the egg thing. Uh, so... Mick and I were both big fans of the original um, one of these. This is from Hampstead Soundworks. They made uh, an analog tremolo, um, the, a, a much bigger box. Uh, anyway, great, great sounding tremolo. This is their new signature trem, much smaller enclosure. And I only stopped using it because I just went to harmonic trem yeah. wholesale. Yeah. That's, that's the only reason I stopped using it, not because I preferred anything else. Sure. So... Yes, we have, uh, you have depth and speed as you have on your normal shenanigans. Then we have, you have the shape control and you have three different sorts of shapes. Do you want to know what they are? Yes, we've got... Classic is an output bias type trem like you get on an old Fender amp. Okay. Um, sine wave is the Hampstead signature tremolo, mm -hmm. so they've tweaked it. And triangle is saw and reverse saw waveform variations. Okay. Depending on the aforementioned shape control yeah so the shape control tells you where that center position is yeah uh in the in, in the waveform so if you have uh strong eyes for me yeah sorry and it must be said the other thing that we both loved about the original was this gain control so tremolo has a really interesting effect in that there's a a, a psychoacoustic element to it that because like, because the uh you are getting rid of, not actually level, the level can be the same, because you're getting rid of half of the, the signal, it feels like it's, it's quieter. It feels quieter, So yeah. you get the, with the hamster, you get this lovely gain boost. So here we go. I 
I'm just going to add a bit of love just to give me a bit more in yeah, the room, if you don't mind, Dan. Manual, mm -hmm. they've got some suggested settings. Okay. Which I thought would be quite interesting. Okay. 61 Princeton. Okay. <laughs> It's magic. It sounds great. It really does. It, it, it educate me in what the uh, reverse, whatever was it, reverse saw. What is that? A reverse saw. Keep going. There's more suggested settings. I don't know if that okay. Would help so that was, we did the blackface one. Yeah. Um, okay. So if you've got if you've got your sawtooth, yeah. right? By changing the way that the shape yeah. goes, um, it it you, the you just get a difference of attack. So, for example, let's do the reverse sawtooth as is suggested. Okay. So, we're going to the triangle wave here. As opposed to, let's go to the other extreme. So you've got this really sharp attack and then it goes off and then bang, it's on, as opposed yeah. to up and down. It's yeah. ba, -da -ba, -da -ba -da. yeah. It's four days, isn't it? Let's I think we get into some more creative uses of this in context in a minute in the backing track. Okay. But tremolo, I don't know, it's one of the oldest effects in the book. Mm -hmm. It's so evocative, isn't it? And it's so Moorish yeah. to play because you start playing it either in time with it or against the time of it and do you want to swang before we go? Or? No, I'm good. I just, I mean, I know the sound of this thing so well. And hearing it, when I haven't heard it for a while, it's like, yeah, it is still just the most awesome sounding trim. Mm. They just, man alive. So, so good. Very nice. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Neon Egg Planetarium. Here then. we go. We're going in. Fraser introduced us to this. Really unusual thing. Yeah. Until you break it down and understand what it does. So... It is stereo for a start. We've got it in monitor today, but it is it does do stereo. It's a it's a reverb and a delay and a compressor. Okay, right? reverb, delay, and compressor. And in addition to that, you can have chorusy effects on your reverb. Okay, on okay? the trails. Yep, nice. Everything is good so far. Yep, and it's a really unique sounding delay and reverb as You've well. You've got a reel and a cassette picture on that, what does that do? Um, it's to do with the way, this is more apparent in the stereo mode, but okay. it's to do with how the delay kind of wow and flutter oh, awesome. works and how predictable or unpredictable or completely crazy it is, I believe. Fraser, please nod. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He says, okay, near, near enough. 
So we'll, we'll, th th this is the overview, right? And then the compressor section is as a, com a compressor as you know it with things that you'll recognize, attack, release, ratio, and level, right? In addition, sidechain. And you will have seen me doing that in the beginning, mm -hmm. where you can feed in, if you switch this little switcher here, <laughs> big love to Greg Cop. Um, uh, you can then feed it from an external source. For example, the best example I've seen is where you put a mic in a bass drum, mm -hmm. and it will activate the compressor, not on your guitar, but on what's coming in on the side chain. Okay. So if, as I was tapping the mic there, that was activating the compressor. Okay. So you can do some... Yeah, beatboxing. Yeah, yeah. Or indeed, just tap it with your hand. Um, so here you go then, Daniel. Let's listen to the reverb to begin with. Um, what, what I might do, how, how do you like this sound just as it is with nothing on? Choir of Angels. Happy? Yep. Right. Reverb then. It's amazing. So those reverbs are just just to keep us in the game. All the way left is a full, rich sounding reverb, cavernous at full settings, as you heard. Yes. This one apparently is sculpted to fit into a mix, so presumably that's EQ'd and just changed a bit. Um, and then the, the right hand one has chorus and a full hall reverb. In addition, this, con this parameter control here in reverb one does dampening. Okay, yeah. In uh, reverb two does pre delay. Oh, nice. Which is pretty cool. Just yep. play that a sec. And then in this one, does the intensity of the chorus. Okay. Magic. Magic. So pretty serious reverb, right? Yeah, yeah. It's just right. wonderful. Delay. Go for it.
That is just wow. So as you heard, we we had some completely flipped out things there. So these are brighter and darker repeats yep. and cleaner delays and more broken modulated delays with wow and flutter. And these two controls here give you the crazy wow and flutter. So mm -hmm. the rate of the wow and flutter and the intensity of the of the effect. What a sound. It's a what great a sound. sound. What I'm just wondering before we move on is whether it will just do, you know, a bit less feedback, a bit less reverb. I mean, you'd never use it for this. Interested to see if it could do a, like a standard slap back and a, and a reverb, which it, it very clearly can, because we just went straight for the crazy sounds. Okay. Okay. Ready? Re yep, ready. Right, I'm just gonna unplug this from the back, <clears throat> all of which will become clear in a minute. In addition, we've got a compressor, right? So, Gany. Yep. Actually, yes, let's do that. It's not exactly your Dynacomp type sure. chicken picking. It yeah, is yeah. very much a, a kind of studio type compressor, but that all makes sense when you give it some of this. So the point of that is, who is going to stand there and tap a microphone to get a compressor working off a side chain? Nobody. Stick the microphone in the bass drum, and all of a sudden, anyone who's tried to uh, link up things like side chain compression or whatever to MIDI or some click track that's coming out of some machine somewhere, this just enables you to stick this in the bass drum or wherever else you want to stick it. <laughs> oh, matron. And start creating some really seriously dynamic things in time with your music. So if you've got that awesome kind of drummer who maybe isn't exactly metronomic, doesn't matter. Because mm. if they start the tune at 88 BPM and <laughs> end up at 98 by the end of the tune, you're all still pulsing together. Can you turn that off? I'm What's assuming that? this, I oh, say so we've got the external or the... Yeah. Oh, okay, that just turns that, that so thing off. It, okay. if, if there, it's just working like a, like a compressor internally, yeah? Okay. 
Okay, but with that on. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Isn't I it? Absolutely just love it. The coolest thing. Fraser showed us. He said, "Have you seen this?" So I really love it. So you know, are you going to use it on a guitar pedal board? Maybe, but for recording and stuff, it's like a little bit of outboard gear. Yeah, yeah, it just is exactly. Magic. It's the it's just the most wonderful. But everyone will be talking about five hundred series stuff, and you know, people who are into recording will will look at this and go, "What are you talking about?" It's just you know. It's very simple, but for guitar players, for me, it bridges that gap quite nicely between something that's very tactile, usable. It doesn't have any deep menus, so mm. I'm not confused by it. And yet, I can just see it fitting right into some really decent, fun, experimental stuff. It's awesome. <laughs> On the subject of which. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Let's we? give that a go. Shall we? Okay. Um, uh, we've, yeah, we've looked at everything, haven't we? Yeah, we have. Cool. Let's turn the compressor off for a minute. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you for watching. Yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed um, and click the bell and all that malarkey. Uh, <laughs> malarkey. Malarkey. Thanks to everyone that's gone to thatpedalshowstore.com and grabbed a t-shirt or strings and pedals and yeah, all the stuff. Um, and to our preferred retailers, uh, uh, key, um, in the UK and, in the UK and Europe. Uh, Anderson's Music of Guildford in Surrey. And in Australia. Uh, would be Pedal Empire. You see, the reason that Dan is like this is because he's excited about what might happen I'm very next. excited. I you genuinely are. am excited. You're, 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 you're at the ice cream van and it hasn't even come around the corner yet. <laughs> also, I think I might have been given some, some normal coffee by mistake. Really? As opposed to decaf. <gasps> yeah, we'll see. Who made your coffee? Fraser? No, no. Oh, a dry, right. a, a, an establishment. Oh, I see. Oh, that explains a lot, actually. <laughs> this is in G, Dan. Okay. And let's it do doesn't it. vary from G. Perfect. And I'm going to say um, please go and buy Michael Landau's record called Rock Bottom. I was listening to it on the way to work this morning and I thought, oh, there's a bit of that I really like. So okay. this is kind of a ripoff of one of the sections of one of his songs for the backing track. So with apologies to Mike Landau, I just love the vibe of it. Okay. Yeah. Let's do vibe. All right. So it's only, it's like, I don't, you know, it's just a bass line and the drum thing. It's everything's fine. <laughs> Nobody panic. <laughs>